Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And it looks as though the majority of Spain is going to have a restriction-free Christmas this year. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a coffee or a beer. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news, and as I said, the majority of Spain is going to have a restriction-free Christmas this year, unlike last year, as only five autonomous communities have decided to tighten Christmas restrictions to curb COVID wave. The government has opted to reinforce vaccination and bring back the use of face masks outdoors in the street, a measure widely questioned by experts for its lack of effectiveness. Beyond that, only Catalonia, the toughest, has imposed a curfew, closed nightclubs and limited meetings as of Friday. Murcia has opted for limiting business hours, the Canary Islands for restricting those of the hotel and catering industry, Cantabria for closing nightlife, and Aragon will implement measures next week, but has not specified which ones. The other communities are, for the moment, opting for recommendations and are appealing for self-care, while epidemiologists, for their part, are urging drastic measures to contain the explosion of cases and avoid the collapse of the health system. So, there we go. Only five of the 17 autonomous communities here in Spain tightening COVID restrictions for Christmas. Catalonia is the autonomous community that has decided to crack down the most, and autonomous communities like the one that I live in here in Madrid are doing nothing at all. However, as we saw, the outdoor mask wearing mandate has been reinstated countrywide. And this is the new mask obligation for walking in the street, shopping or in the town square, but not in the cabin of a ship. The government considers that with the vaccination process and the return of the obligatory use of masks in outdoor areas, it is possible to combat this sixth wave of the pandemic without adopting more restrictions. The decision to adopt measures that fully affect economic activity, such as capacity limitations, hotel and catering closures, or even curfews, is left to the autonomous communities. For now, the government is relying on speeding up the rate of vaccination and on the use of masks outdoors something that experts do not support to curb contagion. From this Christmas Eve, the use of masks outdoors will be compulsory from the moment people aged six and over leave the house in outdoor spaces for public use or those open to the public. Finally, some exceptions have been established after social and community criticism. These are the practice of individual sports or in natural areas while maintaining a minimum distance of 1.5 metres from non-cohabitants. So those are the central government's measures to combat the sixth wave of the pandemic here in Spain, speeding up the vaccination process and getting people to wear masks outdoors. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see that countrywide incidence rate now up to 911. Hospital pressure is at 6.4% and remains at medium risk and there are 7,924 COVID patients hospitalized around the country. An ICU pressure remains high at 16.3% and there are 1,515 COVID patients, unfortunately, in ICU. And if we have a look at the health situation in the Madrid community, where it has exploded in recent days, the accumulated incidence rate here is now up to 1,284, and yesterday there were just under 20,000 reported cases. Now, moving away from the pandemic, and there was some good news for the government yesterday, as an agreement was finally reached on labour reform here in Spain. And as we can see here, the new labour reform curbs on temporary work, limits on subcontracting and flexibility for companies in crisis. The labour reform agreed by the government, trade unions and employers seeks to curb temporary contracts as demanded by Brussels and reverses some of the most controversial aspects of the regulations approved by the Popular Party in 2012, rebalancing the balance between workers and employers in collective bargaining. These are the main lines agreed by the social partners and which will condition labour relations once the new legislation comes into force. And as we can see here, some of the main changes are curbing temporary work, commitment to permanent discontinuous contracts, restricting abuses by subcontractors, and cutting back on the influence of the company agreement. So the government and the social partners finally agreeing on labour reform. Now there was some more good news for the government yesterday, at least when it comes to the economy, and it was that the Spanish economy grew six tenths of a percentage point more than expected in the third quarter to 2.6%. The Spanish economy grew by 2.6% in the third quarter, six tenths of a percentage point more than forecast at the end of October, when the National Statistics Institute predicted an upturn of 2% for the July-September period. This is the biggest rise in this indicator since the end of confinement in the third quarter of 2020, 
thanks to the boost in household consumption, business investment and exports, although gross domestic product, GDP, is still far from the scenario forecast by the government for the end of the year. In the third quarter, national demand recorded growth of 1.1%, 0.9% more than estimated, with a positive contribution from almost all components, highlighting the upward revision of consumption, which recorded growth of 1%. On the external side, exports of goods and services grew by more than previously estimated to 7.1%, and imports of goods and services by 2.2%, quarter on quarter. So yoo for the Spanish economy, growing more than was expected. Now we all know that the property market here in Spain has been red hot in recent times. However, the Bank of Spain sees small overvaluation in Spanish real estate prices. Spain's property sector is slightly overvalued following recent price increases, but remains far from levels seen before the real estate bubble burst 15 years ago, plunging the banking system into crisis, a senior Bank of Spain official said on Thursday. After being hit by lockdown measures introduced in March 2020 to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, Spanish property prices have started to recover and house sales have also soared. Earlier this month, National Statistics Institute, INE, said its property price index rose 4.2% in the third quarter, the biggest increase since the same quarter of 2019, following a 3.3% rise in the second quarter. At the moment, what we have is a slight overvaluation. It is small, and it is certainly far from the levels we had before the global financial crisis. Ángel Estrada, head of financial stability at the central bank, told a news briefing. So a slight overvaluation in the property market here, according to the Bank of Spain, but nothing like what we experienced back in 2008. Now, today, the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, and Santa Claus is coming to town, but one person who is not returning to Spain for Christmas is the former King Juan Carlos. And this evening, current King, King Felipe, will give his annual address amid rumors that his father wants to return to Spain. King Felipe is expected to try to turn the page on another turbulent year for Spain's royal family in his annual Christmas Eve address, amid speculation that his father, Juan Carlos, hopes to return to the country soon. The former monarch abdicated in favour of his son seven years ago and left Spain abruptly for the United Arab Emirates in August 2020 in an attempt to protect the crown from a series of damaging allegations about his financial dealings. Felipe had sought to stem the damage months earlier by stripping Juan Carlos of his annual stipend and renouncing his personal inheritance from his father in response to reports that he was in line to receive millions of euros from a secret offshore fund with ties to Saudi Arabia. So the King's speech tonight, and as we saw in that article, it was another turbulent year for Spain's royal family. And again, I'll ask the question, is a royal family necessary for Spain in 2021 and beyond? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Now let's take a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from John, Travelling Wino. How did you keep a straight face? Narco basket with jamon. Priceless. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. And it can be difficult sometimes to keep a straight face when reading some of the news stories that pop up from time to time, especially the one that you mentioned in your comment about a couple of drug dealers down there in the region of Morphia who decided to set up a Christmas hamper full of drugs, but they also included an eight kilo leg of ham. And why did they include the ham? Well, because as we all know, after you smoke a couple of joints, you get the munchies. One here from David, you think you got problems. We had over 100,000 cases in the UK yesterday. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment. And I did see in the press yesterday that the UK had a record amount of daily cases some 120,000, some 50,000 more cases than were reported in Spain. So case numbers out of control in the UK, they're out of control in Spain, they're out of control in Portugal. In fact, I don't know too many countries here in Europe where they aren't out of control. But the good news is that the majority of symptoms that people are having are mild, so let's hope it stays that way. One here from Helen, can you find out for me if we'll be able to come on holiday in January to Fuerteventura? Are the pubs and hotels still open and not closed? Yeah, Helen, thanks for the comment. As far as I know, the Canary Islands are currently open and there's no plan to close them. However, they are talking about bringing in some more restrictions for example, a night curfew and limiting how many people can go to bars and restaurants 
and things like that. However, as we know, this is a situation which is continually changing and it's not easy to predict the future. But I get the impression that the central government and the autonomous communities here in Spain are unwilling to bring in harsh restrictions because they don't want to affect the economy. So stay tuned and if the Canary Islands do bring in more restrictions that may affect holiday makers, I'll let you know on this channel. One here from King. Hi from India. Got nice COVID information from your video. I decided to cancel my one month trip to Sitges, Lorca and Madrid. Just share your videos to my friends who are in Spain at this moment. Before Omicron, they made it to Spain. We also want to know restriction status. Omicron cases are increasing. Will the Spanish government impose restrictions? Any idea if they're closing the borders or stopping international flights? Thank you. Yeah, King, thanks for the comment. And I'll try to answer some of the questions in your comment so that your friends here in Spain know what's going on. Firstly, when it comes to internal borders here in Spain, there's no talk of autonomous communities closing them again like they did last year. International borders are also open and I haven't heard anything about them closing. When it comes to restrictions here in Spain, it depends where you are. Some autonomous communities have a COVID passport requirement in place Others do not. For example, here in Madrid, there is no COVID passport requirement. And some autonomous communities, as we saw at the beginning of the video, announced that they are bringing in more restrictions. For example, Catalonia is going to reimpose a curfew. And in Murcia, they're going to shut down non-essential activity between the hours of 1 and 6 a.m. And that's basically it. And if your friends want to enjoy a relatively restriction-free holiday in Spain, I recommend the Madrid community because if there's a leader in Spain that is reluctant to impose COVID restrictions, it's the Madrid Premier Isabel de Ayuso. One here from Marcus, it would be interesting to know if that survey of how much people work in Spain took account of cash in hand work and the autonomos. Both sectors, in my experience, where Spaniards work very long hours indeed. Yeah, Marcus, thanks for the comment and referring to that survey that we saw the other day from Our World in Data that said that here in Spain, people work an average of three hours a day. I think the data in that survey was a bit skewed because it also included retired people, students and people that are unemployed. So perhaps not a true reflection on the amount of hours Spaniards work. And in my experience also, the majority of people in this country do work hard. One here from Michael, be free to run. This guy is better than Shill. He actually believes what he is saying, LOL. Yeah, Michael, thanks for the nice comment just before Christmas. And I've only got one thing to say. Feliz Navidad. And finally, one here from John. Thank you, Stuart. Been around since June 2020. Keep up the great work. Wish you and your family a very enjoyable and safe Christmas and hopefully a more positive 2022. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos and let's all hope for a more positive 2022. And I hope you and yours have a safe and enjoyable Christmas too. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you did not. Have a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays to you all. I'm going to take a few days off, so I'll see you all next week. Hasta luego.